Hello, Saoborna, and a warm welcome to the Per Anger Prize 2021. We're here today to celebrate an exceptional human being who has dedicated his life to make life better for all. The Per Anger Prize winner 2021, Sibusiso Innocent Sikode. My name is Marika Grisel, and I had the pleasure to meet Subusiso in South Africa, outside Durban, in these huge shack settlements. It was during my time as a correspondent for Swedish television. I have lived and worked in South Africa since 1990, and it is a great honor for me to be your host for this ceremony. The very high hope many of us had for a better life for all South Africans after the first democratic election in 1994 has not come through. That is a sad fact. The challenge to, power, to challenge powerful and speak the truth can be very risky. And Sibusisu knows far too well that his life is threatened. He embodies the words Ubuntu a word that Nelson Mandela often mentioned. It means something like, we are people through other people. Our humanity depends on our relationship to our fellow human beings. And now we go to South Africa. About a month ago, the prize was announced, the 2021 year Per Anger Prize. And this is, was, this is the way Sibusiso's organization received the news. His organization, the Shack Dwellers Movement, Abakhali, Base, Mijondolo. Today, I have the great honor and pleasure to announce that the Per Anger Prize of 2021 is awarded to Sibusiso Innocent Sikoda. So beautiful to see the joy in South Africa when the prize winners were celebrating. I recognize it all. But we're also here to remember and honor the bravery of diplomat Per Anger, who saved Jews from the Holocaust during the Second World War. And to tell us more about the Per Anger Prize, I'm joined now by Ingrid Lomfors, the director of the Living History Forum. Uh, she's also the head of the Per Anger Prize jury. Hey, Ingrid. Hey. Hello. So tell us more about the Per Anger Prize. So the Per Anger Prize is the Swedish government's international prize for human rights and democracy. It was established in 2004 as you said, in honor of the Swedish diplomat Per Anger and his actions in Budapest uh, during World War II, uh, where he participated in rescuing thousands of Hungarian Jews. And it's the 18th time now that we at the Living History Forum award the prize. Who can nominate to the prize? So we have the privilege of having a long-lasting cooperation with civil society. We have now nine Swedish organizations that do international work, and each of them present a candidate to the jury. And I would like to tell you who they are. Afrika Grupperna, Amnesty International, Civil Rights Defenders, Diakonia, IM Swedish Development Partner, the Kvinna till Kvinna Foundation, Save the Children, Act Church of Sweden, and We Effect. And I think that the, the cooperation uh, with this capable and re reliable organization is really the key factor uh, to why we in the jury each year um, receive worthy 
nominees of uh, you know, civil rights uh, uh, defenders from all over the world. But the difficult thing for us in the jury is to, to pick one, to choose one, because they, are so, they, they all do such a great and important work. Can I just express a special thank to Africa Grupperna, who nominated uh, Sibu Sisu Sikorda for the, uh, this year's Paranga Prize, and also a big thank for, for being our partner during this week. Of course. Ingrid, who, what are the criteria for the prize? There are several criteria that the nominees must have in order to be considered for the prize. And the main ones are that they should have acted to promote democratic and humanitarian values. They should have shown courage and initiative. And they should also you know, find themselves in a circumstances where their work put them at risk. Uh, and hopefully that the prize can, can give some protection, at least contribute to some protection. Uh, so the criteria about protection is also to honor the Schutzpass that uh, diplomat Peranger issued as a, as a temporary passport that give, gave protection to the Jews during the Holocaust. So in what way do you think this year's Per Anger Prize winner following the first step of Per Anger? Well, diplomat Per Anger was a role model um, for his time during the Holocaust. And this year's prize winner, Sibu Siso Sikorda, is really a role model in our time especially for the poor and for the young people. Yeah, we will now have the opportunity to hear Par Anger's own word about the Schutzpass and facing the Nazis in Budapest in 1945. Året var 1941 och en ung man vid namn Per Anger skickades på sitt första uppdrag som diplomat till Ungern för att arbeta med handelsfrågor. Men han kom att hamna mitt i brinnande krig och i Hitlers utrotning av judar. Min första reaktion var väl ändå när jag kort tid efter tyskarnas ockupation hur man då på gatorna mötte så där var tredje var fjärde människa försedd med en stor gul stjärna som tecken på att den personen var dömd och tillhörde en ras som inte hade tillstånd att leva längre alltså en, en lägre ras på något sätt. Då, då tyckte jag att aldrig någonsin hade väl civilisationen sjunkit så djupt i skam och förnedring, tyckte jag. Och det var väl det som gjorde att jag omedelbart efter det så sa jag det här, här måste vi göra någonting, det, här, det går ju inte där. Per Anger började nu utfärda provisoriska svenska pass till ungerska judar. Det visar ju sig att de här ofta ganska obildade nazistfunktionärerna de blev ofta imponerade av officiella dokument och papper. Och vi hade, fick ju många bevis på hur människor kunde klara sig bara med enkla, sådana här enkla papper med, med vår stämpel på. Per Anger skickade täta larmrapporter hem till UD om legationens skriande behov av förstärkning för att kunna rädda fler judar. Och i juli 1944 kommer UDs svar i form av en ny legationssekreterare vid namn Raoul Wallenberg som nu började arbeta tillsammans med Per Anger. När det gäller själva insatserna för att rädda andra människor då glömmer man ändå på något sätt sig själv och man är alltså inte medveten om faran. Man är inte medveten om att när man går in i nazisternas högkvarter att, att de plötsligt kan ta en revolver och skjuta en. Med list och beslutsamhet tog han sig an uppgiften. Ja, och, och får ner då till den där stationen där, där tåget skulle avgå. Och det var redan färdigt. De hade redan spikat igen alla de här boskapsvagnarna. Jag sa till den här tyska officeren där att öppnar du här för att jag är svensk diplomat och om ni inte gör det så kommer jag att anmäla er för tyska ambassadören som jag känner. Så öppnar han de här. Och då så sa jag, finns det några som har svenska skyddsplats? Det var bara två stycken av ungefär ett hundratal. Och då sa jag ungefär så här att ja men jag känner ju igen er här borta. Ni, ni, måste ju, ni fick ju passa om dagen. Jag såg ju, känner ju igen er. Har ni glömt dem eller har ni inga, har ni inga papper på er där ni kan, kan visa att ni har skyddspass? Ja, jo, visst. Förstås. Så tog de fram de olika körkort och kvitton, skattekvitton och allt möjligt på ungerska språket som tyskarna inte kunde läsa. 
Och så, jag, jag sa, där utmärkt, det visar jag att ni har skyddsmassa allihop. Följ med mig bara. Och så tog jag ut dem ur vagnarna. Och då hade vi i maskopi en ungersk polisofficer som var i vår tjänst, så att säga. Hon stod på perrongen med alla sina medaljer på bröstet. Och jag sa till honom, ja, ta hand om de här, så jag bara. Och då trodde tyskarna att han skulle föra dem till fängelse. I själva verket så förde han dem till våra svenska skyddshus där vi, där vi inkvarterade dem. Fram till 1945 lyckades Per Anger tillsammans med Raoul Wallenberg rädda tiotusentals judar undan förintelsen. Här finns en man som hade en moralisk kompass eh, som inte hade någon beslutsprocess inför ondskan utan valde att handla på grundval av sina egna värderingar och allmänmänskliga principer. Den typen av människa behöver vi ha framför oss. För vi ställs dagligen i vår värld inför sådana situationer där vi måste erinra oss om hur dessa förebilder har agerat. Ja, Ingrid, what do you think that uh, Parange would have said about antisemitism today? I think he would have been quite worried about the spread of antisemitism and about racism as well in Sweden and in the rest of the world. But I also think that he would have been quite proud to see how many human rights activists are acting around the globe in his, in his spirit. One of the missions for the Living History Forum is to support schools with educational material around the Holocaust and around human rights issues, isn't it? Yes. So uh, we, have a, we at the Living History Forum have a long-lasting cooperation with schools in conjunction with the Paranger Prize and Week. And this year, students at Södra Latin and Kärtorp Gymnasium have uh, worked with the classroom material that we produce called Mensho Rets Kämpa, Human Rights Defenders. Uh, it's a material that addresses both the crimes committed in the past and the struggle for uh, human rights uh, today. And it's available on our website. And, and these students uh, will have an opportunity to have a Zoom session with the prize winner, Sibu Siso, so that the students can have a direct conversation with him. Ingrid Lomfors, thank you for that. And now we're going to turn to South Africa and to learn more about the Paranga Prize winner 2021. Eighteen members of his movement have been murdered. He himself has been targeted in attacks and forced to go underground. In one of the world's most unequal countries, he fights for the rights of the poor in the shack settlements of South Africa, where families live in shacks without water or electricity. But to take a stand against corruption, and demand equal treatment for all is controversial. That's why he's constantly under threat. We must free ourselves. Sibusiso defends families who are threatened with eviction and litigates for their rights in court. He also organizes mass demonstrations to demand better living conditions for the people of South Africa's shack settlements. Abakali's demand is land, decent housing and dignity. How to get there, obviously one needs to organize and build the power of the impoverished from below, making sure that no one is left behind. He fights for those worst affected by the pandemic, the poor, women and children so they can have access to water, disease control and vaccine, so they can survive. It's a do or die situation. So I do not see myself stopping fighting for the rights of the homeless and the landless. 
to get decent housing, but also to be recognized and respected as human beings and to have a say in the affairs of their countries and their communities. This is the mission which I am committed to fulfill. Yes, Ingrid Lomfors mentioned that uh, students are an important part of the work of Paranger Price. Uh, and now we have the pleasure to meet some of them, listen to some of them. I hereby welcome Anna Nyman, Amolo Nilsson and René De Paula. And they come from Victor Rydbergs Gymnasium and they will perform Change is Gonna Come. I was born by the river In a little shack Whoa, and just like that river I've been running ever since It's been a long, a long time coming But I know change is gonna come oh yes it will it's been too hard living but i'm afraid to die i don't know what's out there beyond the sky it's been a long a long time coming but i know a change is gonna come oh yes it will i go to the movie then i go downtown somebody keep telling me don't hang around It's been a long, a long time coming But I know a change is gonna come Oh, yes it will Then I go to Beautiful. Thank you, students, for Victor Rydberg's gymnasium. In the struggle for freedom, music and culture has often been a major force for change, certainly so in South Africa. Now here to present the Swedish government's award for human rights and democracy is our Minister for Culture and Democracy, Amanda Lind. Welcome. Thank you so much. Dear friends, we are living in a time of major 
changes and adjustments to new realities. The global COVID-19 pandemic has impacted our lives and societies in a way that we still cannot fully comprehend. In many countries, human rights actions and democratic principles are challenged daily. And democracy must never be taken for granted. We must safeguard it every day. And in this work, we all have to participate. As we celebrate the 100th anniversary of universal and equal suffrage here in Sweden this year, we are facing major challenges, both nationally and internationally. Far too many people today live in situations of democratic exclusion, where the democratic dialogue is threatened and anti-democratic actors are growing louder. And if the silence, if the dialogue is silenced, then democracy itself is silenced. This year's Per Anger Prize winner personifies the fundamental principles of democracy. Putting his life on the line, Sibusisu Innocent Sikode stands up for the equal value of all human beings and the right to live in dignity. Despite threats and hatred, he has continued to fight for people's rights to secure housing and access to society's most basic functions. He's a co-founder of the South African Shack Dwellers Movement, which fights for decent living conditions for poor residents of South African shanty towns. He also fights for all the residents to have access to clean water, electricity and healthcare and to protect them from being evicted from their homes. Sibu Siso Sikode, your efforts to stand up for human rights mean so much for so many people. And in a time marked by major challenges and human rights violations, your ability to mobilize thousands of people and bring the world's attention to what is happening is more important than ever. And in our meeting yesterday, I was deeply touched by how you find the strength to continue your efforts despite witnessing your friends being murdered. Your persistence in this struggle for more than 15 years is a testament to a conviction that carry with us through you. You give voice to those who cannot defend their right to land and housing through legal proceedings. You deserve recognition and to be honored about this important work. As Minister for Culture and Democracy, I'm especially pleased to see how you so visibly stand up for democratic principles, combat corruption and fight for everyone to have their say. It is through democracy and participation at grassroots level that together we build a stronger and more sustainable society. Now, we are grateful that you are with us today on a video link, even though we, of course, would have greatly enjoyed meeting you in person. Your initiatives and your great courage means so much for women and men in South Africa and around the world, and it inspires us all in our daily work to stand up for democracy and fight for equal values for everyone. So, Thank you, Sibu Sisu, for your efforts and for your important work. And now we will go over to the Swedish Embassy in Pretoria and to Ambassador Mikkelsen Håkan Juholt for the handing over of the prize. On behalf of the Swedish government, I today have the honor and the privilege of presenting you with the 2021 Per Anger Prize. The jury's motivation to give you this prize is as follows. Mr. Sibusisu, innocent Sikoda, you do not hesitate to highlight injustice committed against the most marginalized members of society. Acting under threat and from a position of vulnerability, you manage to convey to the outside world the importance of the right to housing and land. Congratulations.
Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you so much. The price for land, for decent housing, and the right to the city is paid in blood. Brutal and unlawful evictions continue to terrorize our communities. No human being should live in substandard housing conditions without access to basic services, such as water and sanitation. Where there is no road access, where there is no electricity, and where there is no refuse collection. I have dedicated my life to the fight for equal rights for all South Africans. And I am deeply honored and humbled to stand here today and receive the Peanga Prize. A prize named after a man who bravely resisted fascism and saved many lives. I want to extend my deep gratitude to the jury, the Living History Forum, Minister Amanda Lind, and Africa Krupena for nominating me. We all know that many of the people of Sweden, as well as their government, gave strong support to our people during apartheid. So it is an honor to receive a prize like this from the Swedish government. I have been carried through the last 15 years by the movement Abashla Alibasam Jondor, a movement of the poor, of people living in the shacks, we have more than 80,000 members. The majority are women. Membership and leadership are open to all without regards to ethnicity or national origin. We insist that the dignity of all human beings must be recognized. We should be included in all decision making that affect our lives. Our right to the city should be recognized. Our settlements should receive adequate services and we should be able to build our homes and communities in peace. We wish to see a much deeper form of democracy in our country and in the world. We resist the idea that because we are poor, we must be confined to the dark corners. We have organized in solidarity with strugglers all over the world and build relationship with the movement in different countries. The strategy is global. The award of the Peanga Prize means that our strategy for land, decent housing and dignity has been recognized as just and legitimate in Sweden. It is an acknowledgement that the poor have experiences and ideas from which others can learn. Learn also from the courage of the Abashali members who have continued to organize despite the repeated violent evictions, serious intimidations, and assassinations. An award for me is also an award for the movement and for the determination and the courage of all the people who have kept our movement going for 15 years. Despite very serious repression, which has included arrest, death threats, and murders. Peenga was a brave man. Our comrades who have lost their lives, people like Tulin Lovu, Gululego Kuala, and others were brave people. Today, courage meets courage. Principle meets principle. No legitimate and democratic movement or activist should be criminalized and attacked when organizing to build the power of the oppressed from below. All evictions leading to homelessness must be stopped and those responsible for illegal and violent evictions must face criminal charges. The poor are not poor by choice. It is the history of colonialism, apartheid, and land dispossession that keep us in deep poverty. The commodification of land and state corruption keep us poor. This is why the social value of land must come before its commercial value. This is why it is important to organize, to build democratic power from below. 
This requires building solidarity between and within struggling communities. This is what has kept us strong. It is very dangerous to be an activist in South Africa and in many countries around the world because we are well organized and can stand firm to protect our rights. This is perceived as threatening to people in power. There is a serious problem of political gangsterism in South Africa and especially in the city of Durban and the province of KwaZulu-Natal. Hundreds of people have been assassinated. Corrupted politicians who enrich themselves and their families at the expense of millions of poor people of South Africa have been objected to our work. They have used the police, militarized private security guards, and using Gabi, which are hitmen, to kill us. Abakari have faced serious repression. We have been beaten, tortured in police custody, slandered in the media, and subject to open death threats. Some of us have been murdered with impunity. I am amongst those who have suffered serious repression, including arrest, torture, the destruction of my home, slander, and death threats. In a period of 10 years, our movement lost 18 activists. The price for land and dignity has been paid in blood. These murders have not been investigated. Our lives count for nothing to the state and to much of society. We are treated as if we are beneath the law. This award says that our lives count to you. This kind of support forces the repressive forces that we confront to recognize that we are not people that do not count. It helps to keep us safe. Today, I call on the people of South Africa mostly young people, as they are the future of our country and the world, to support our struggle for land, decent housing, and dignity. I also call on the government of South Africa to stop evicting poor people and to stop the use of violence when dealing with poor people. I call on the government to consider putting the social value of land before its commercial value. I also call on the government of South Africa to protect, uphold our hard-won constitutional democracy. You have my deep gratitude and the deep gratitude of Abakli Adibasem John Dolo. I hope that we can work together to continue the struggle to humanize the world. Together, we stand for dignity, respect, and democracy. We are all people that count. I thank you. The Parangar Prize winner, Sibusiso Innocent Sikode. Thank you for your powerful speech, Ziabonga. And now we're about to meet another extraordinary South African, singer and composer Sisanda Nilsson. Sisanda moved to Sweden in 2014 and now lives in Venersborg. She takes the stage together with Victor Olofsson on guitar and Joje Trosse Linsmur on percussion. I am originally from the Eastern Cape, but I grew up in KwaZulu Natal in Margate, about 45 minutes away from Durban, same region as our prize winner. I am going to sing a song that I wrote called Noma Totolo. I wrote Noma Totolo to celebrate freedom. It's a song about taking a long journey and enjoying the freedom of traveling, as many South Africans associate traveling with freedom as they remember the years when they were not free to travel. Listening all the way from Pretoria is Mgoza Galanga, Kunene, Nditane, Ngokutita Madota, Sibusiso Siti Alala, Sibuisa Nanawe. I dedicate the song to you. Siel sigi si aban bati molwen iskelo si ayo isingond di hambil ipasiel sigi 
Sisi Abamba Timolweni Squelo Siayo Yisi Uno Matoto Thank you, Sisanda, Joye and Victor. Beautiful, beautiful music from South Africa with Sisanda Nilsson. And now we will go live to Pretoria, to the Swedish Embassy. And I will hand over to Minister Amanda Lind again. Welcome. Thank you. Now, Sibu Sisu. Hello. Hello, Minister. Congratulations once again to the Per Anger Prize. How do you feel? Thank you, Minister. I am grateful and I am very um, excited, humbled and, and honored for such a wonderful prize named after a brave man and selfless man like Per Anger. How has the reaction been in South Africa? Well, the people of South Africa and Abashali Basam Jondolo are very excited and honored about this prize that has been uh, awarded to me. Um, it means a lot to the entire uh, working class and the impoverished, impoverished communities in South Africa. How would you say that uh, the Paranger Prize will uh, affect you personally and your organization? Well, the Peenga Prize means that uh, our struggle is just and legitimate. It also means that I could be, I, I could uh, receive some sense of protections, you know, from working under the shadow of death. But also, it means that those aid and activists who have died uh, would not have died in vain. It means that their struggle was just and legitimate. But it also means that um, we have a long way to go in South Africa you know, as far as the human rights is concerned. 
really have. And uh, once again, congratulations to the prize and thank you for all your important work. And I know I'm not the only one here who has questions. Marika? Yes, yes, we have students here from Kärtorps gymnasium, Tanvir Kaur och René Mohusa. Uh, come, come Tanvir, and please ask your first question to our prize winner. Hi, my name is Tanvir Kaur, I'm from Kärtorps gymnasium, and I would like, like to ask you a question. When and why did you decide to start working for the rights of the poor in South Africa? Hi, Tanvir. Thank you for that question. Well, um, I decided back in 1998 when I first arrived in the city of Durban in South Africa, coming from the countryside, um, coming to um, study a law degree at the university. So when I got to Kennedy Road, an informal settlement in Durban, I discovered that uh, people were living under very dangerous uh, co living conditions. Uh, in fact, when I got there, there was hardly any access to water and sanitation. There was no refuse collection. There was no road access, but also um, there was no electricity. As a result, people will use candles as a source of light, use also paraffin stoves, which are often explosive. And many people have been burned to death in these uh, shack settlements. So we've buried babies, we've buried um, other people in the informal settlement. Uh, when I saw that, um, I realized that I had a duty to God and duty to my country to save lives. That's when exactly I decided to actually um, um, uh, uh, um, do something about the living conditions in the informal settlement. Thank you for the question. My classmate Renea has another question for you. Good day, Mr. Uh, good day, Mr. Sibusu, and congratulations on receiving the Paranga Prize of 2021. Uh, my question to you is, what would you say is the root cause of the unequal living conditions in South Africa? Hi, good day to you, Rene. Thank you for that wonderful question. Well, um, the root cause of the inequality and poverty in South Africa obviously can be traced back to the times of the colonial rule, but also in the times of apartheid. And the state corruption, as we witness today, um, it keeps the inequality, but it keeps people in deep poverty in a um, beautiful and rich country like, like South Africa. So basically the root cause um, is obviously the system that we um, are f f forced to actually uh, live on the, the system that puts profit before human needs. And, and it's, it's when the commodification of land has begun to enrich few individuals at the expense of millions of South Africa. So as Abakali, we call for the decommodification de of land so that land should not be bought and sold. Uh, so that everyone could have access to land. And by so doing, it will mean everyone would be exposed to better um, equal opportunities, but also in the economy. Okay, thank you for your answer, Mr. Sibusu. I will, I will take that with me. My next question to you is as following. What kind of engagement uh, from our side here in Sweden could help you with your work in South Africa? It would be very exciting for young person uh, like you, uh, Rene, to look for the organizations that are doing similar work um, like we do in South Africa, who are engaged in a sim similar cause of making sure that the rights of the impoverished and the working class are protected. So I would want to um, point out that you have organizations that are progressive, such as Africa Kruperna, for instance, uh, the organization that have actually nominated me. Um, you can link with them, you can volunteer with them, you can also uh, engage in the discussion that are trying to um, rethink about the, the world that puts human needs um, ahead of, of profit as, as we continue to face today. Thank you for your answer. Uh, I'll take that with me. My classmate Tanvir has one last question for you. My last question for you is, what is your dream for South Africa? Well, my dream for South Africa is a South Africa that is open to the world, a South Africa that is welcoming, a South Africa that looks after the most impoverished 
um, such as of our society, especially women and children, I am dreaming of a South Africa where men and women can talk freely, can engage their government without fear. Um, I dream for a South Africa where every human being is treated with respect and dignity. Obviously, a South Africa that does not engage into violence. Um, a South Africa that would have a government that would be engaging meaningfully with its communities, with its society, but also a current government that will not use violence at any stage. A, a society that would have uh, no evictions at all, as we see brutal and unlawful evictions. Thank you so much for the answer. Thank you so much, students René and Tanvir. And, uh, Mr. Sibosiso, I have another question for you. How do you deal with the situation around your own safety and the safety of your members? Well, that is a tricky question and uh, a very um, fragile one in, in the sense that one cannot disclose every tactics, uh, of course, that one has to navigate but I must say what has helped me and, and, and some of my comrades uh, over the past years has been to report, obviously, um, uh, threats, uh, death threats in particular. Uh, we also have had to publicize these threats, make them public so that everyone knows, uh, especially those that uh, implicate those uh, gangster politicians who are in power, who are there to save their interests. Uh, but also it has been very helpful to work with a number of progressive organizations around the world, um, including Amnesty International, uh, who, you know, through Churchland programs and other organizations like the Social Economic Rights Institute, and individuals, of, obviously, who have rallied in our support. And many uh, grassroots organizations and formations around the world who have rallied in our support. I remember um, um, having... Uh, protest in solidarity with Abatlali in Budapest, in Hungary, in New York City, in the United States, but also in the city of London. So all these progressive forces have been sh showing solidarity with Abatlali. That has actually helped me um, surviving today. Uh, have you ever thought of giving up? Well, giving up would be the last thing that I would ever think of. Um, that would mean, um, in fact, I would have no um, other thing that I would be living for. Um, I have come to the world for a special uh, mission. And uh, I want to use the words of the founder of the Boy Scouts Association, um, Lord Baden uh, Robert Powell, who actually said, we must leave the earth a better place than we have found it. And I want to quote from the words of Franz Fanon uh, as well, um, one of the intellectuals who once said, each generation must discover its mission, fulfill it or betray it. And I'm in that process. So under no circumstances will I stop because that would mean uh, the duty to God, duty to my country that I have taken oath on would have been betrayed. Sibusiso Innocent Sikode with us live from Pretoria in South Africa. Thank you very much and Hambagale. Go well. And thank you also thank to the minister. So <laughs> thank you also, of course, to the minister, to the students, and to the embassy in Pretoria. Thank you very much for being with us. We are now about to say goodbye. And please remember the often dangerous and very hard work for a decent life, for education and for housing goes on day by day, minute by minute in our global world. Today we celebrate Sibu Sisa and his members. Tomorrow, the work for democracy, justice and equality will continue. Thank you from us and goodbye and see you